Hey there, I'm David from dodmedia.co.uk. Today I'm going to show you how to use After Effects to achieve a glitch in a video like this. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is using a bunch of effects. Um, the main one is going to be a video copilot effect called Twitch, so you might need to go and buy that if you don't have it already, but I highly recommend it. It's a fantastic effect. Uh, and then the other ones are all native effects, which I'll show you step by step how to achieve the look. So let's get started. So I've got my clip loaded up in After Effects and you can see I've already applied all the effects here and if I hit U you can see all of the keyframes that I've got for that clip. Now just to note I'm actually also using this as a dynamic link with Premiere so that I can play things back smoothly. Now it's not in full resolution it's in a quarter of the resolution but the advantage of doing this is that you don't have to uh, RAM preview it every time and it just it, I think it just speeds up your workflow and you can also then play this back and edit along to music or to sound effects and not need to render those each time as well so to speed up your workflow I'd recommend doing that now back to this clip we've got three effects on here we've got CC Griddler CC Smear which both come natively with the with the software with Adobe um, After Effects and you can find them in I believe Distort and under Distort then you've got Griddler and Smear. The third one is Twitch. Now Twitch is a video copilot effect and video copilot obviously isn't free but I would highly recommend buying this one. It's uh, I think I paid about fifty dollars for it and I, I use it so much it's really really handy so if you like what you see in this video, note that it's mainly achieved through the use of Twitch. So you've seen what the end result will be. So let's go ahead and delete all of these. In fact, head back to Premiere and delete this, which is the dynamic linked file. So now this is essentially just a raw clip without anything affecting it. I've just labeled it a different color so that it stands out so that I can see that clip in my timeline easily. So what I tend to do is create a copy of it because otherwise it'll replace that actual clip and then there's no way to get it back um, if you don't like what you've done. Then right click and come up here replace with After Effects composition. It's going to load it up in After Effects with the in and out points of that small selection and here we can start applying our filters or our effects. So let's start with uh, Griddler, then let's add Smear to it as well, and finally Twitch. Now I don't know what's going on here, I think this is just the default, uh, default setting in Smear, but for now what we can do is disable these two effects because we don't need to see them. We're going to concentrate first on Twitch. So Twitch, you have all of these options. What I'm going to be using is Light, Scale, Slide, and Time. So just enable those. You can enable Color and Blur if you want as well. Uh, I don't, but if you would like to, go ahead. It just means more parameters that you need to manage. Now in Operator Controls, in Light, we're going to bring this down to 15. In Scale, we're going to bring this down to 15, or even 5, I think. 15 is a bit overkill. In slide, we're going to bring this down to, to 25 or 15 maybe. And RGB split, we're going to make that 40. And then finally time. Time amount, we're going to go for 40 as well. And make sure that time direction is on the default setting of both because that's where you get the best effect out of it, where things move forwards and backwards randomly, um, and it it really amplifies the, the impression that it's a, a glitch, that it's an unintentional mistake in the video. So now that we've got the settings that we want, what we need to do is keyframe the amount. By keyframe the amount, which is at 100 right now, that means 100% uh, wetness or mix or 100% affected. Um, if you hit U, it'll bring up your keyframes that are active on that uh, clip, and you'll see their amount, and it's set to 100. So what you can do is set that to zero, and that's your initial keyframe set to zero. 
if you hold down command or control and the right arrow, it'll move you forward one frame and then set this back to 100. That means it's going to skip from zero effect up to 100. And remember that this is on a random seed, which means that each frame is going to look different. Each frame is going to be slightly more or slightly less affected with the twitch effect. So now let's skip ahead three frames and we're going to drop that back down to zero again. Well, actually, no, let's keep it at five. That way, these further frames, these following frames, will still be affected, but only slightly. Skip ahead maybe a second, and then repeat. So select those frames, copy them with Command-C or Control-C, and then paste them, and it'll paste them as they are. And then it'll affect the same way. What you could do is drag this out a little bit so that the effect lasts longer. That way you'll just notice it's a little bit more unique. Then maybe over two, let's paste it again and make this drag out even more like so. And then over here, let's just bring it all the way back up to 100. And there we go. Now you can see it's glitching away quite happily and every single glitch is unique because it's on a random seed so you'll never get the same glitch twice all right that is it for twitch really next what we can do is enable smear now smear is quite fun um, because smear is essentially going to give us that old VHS look where you have the scanning lines that run down the film from it being for the of the tape from it being paused too many times or rewound or fast forwarded so by default you've got one point there and one point there what we want to do is have the from point over on the left of the screen and the to point over on the right of the screen and then what we want to do is increase the reach to a thousand so that it just distorts the pixels without completely smearing them off the screen and then once you've got that set just drag it up so it's off screen so that it's not affecting that because we want it to be off screen by default so that it's not affecting the picture so that then we can drag it down to affect the picture so set these to keyframe hit U again and it'll bring in these new keyframes that you've set and now where the effect starts happening up until where the effect ends, drag these down. What's going to happen is it's going to scan down from top to bottom while Twitch is doing its magic. See? Like that. And it's really going to look... Uh, it, might look it might not look super right now, but by the end of it, once we've applied Griddler, it'll look fantastic. So copy those keyframes, paste them further on, and now this one's a longer one, so we're going to make it last a bit longer. Here it's going to scan down. Okay, and then copy these keyframes here and drag it over to this last sort of event glitch and paste that in there. And then what you can do for the end here is copy just this beginning one and paste it back at the end. And that way it will go up and then down or down and then up so now the issue is we've got it going down while there's the glitch but then obviously it's going from the bottom it's got a keyframe here from the bottom it's got to work its way back up and there's no disable feature on smear there's no amount like there is on twitch so quite simply instead of having it go up randomly during the shot all we're going to do is reverse these keyframes so select the four keyframes that are relevant to CC Smear for that event. Go to Keyframe Assistant and then Time Reverse Keyframes. And now you'll see it doesn't scan through while it's not twitching. And then it will scan upwards while the effect is happening. And it'll sort of add in little random glitches there. Now bear in mind you can see here where it looks like it should be following this line here. It looks like sh there should be this sort of target line that's going across, but it's skipping ahead or it's lagging behind. The reason for that, like there, there's no effect. The reason for that is actually because of Twitch, because we're operating with time. 
See, if you dragged smear below Twitch, you'd have the line. But because the time is being manipulated, it's actually shifting the smear line before or after, uh, regardless of where this is, which is really good because it makes it look even more like a glitch. And now here, these last frames here of this section are on top. And the effect stays on top in this part that we don't want glitching until these next Twitch keyframes come on where we do want it to glitch. And now because it's on top, it can just work its way back down again and work its way back up because this is the double one we've got where it comes from up to down to up and finishes up off screen. Okay, so that looks brilliant, and if we head back over to Premiere, we can play through this. And it looks really good, but there's something not quite there. There's something missing, and I think the reason is it's just a bit too clean. It's still, despite the RGB shift and despite the smear, it still looks a little bit clean. Enter CC Griddler. Now CC Griddler is going to give us exactly what we need for this purpose. So we're going to enable this effect and you'll see there's no, there's no visible change when you enable it because horizontal scale and vertical scale are both on 100. So that's, that's a normal amount. What we are going to do is set the tile size to 3. And then keyframe horizontal scale and vertical scale and press U again on the keyboard and it'll bring up those keyframes that we've just enabled. Now, these are set to 100 on the very first frame. So, like with Twitch, we're going to go ahead and move forward one frame. And then horizontal scale, we're going to put at 300. And vertical scale, we're going to put at 75. Uh, now, that doesn't look all that great. So, perhaps if we make the tile size... Yeah, let's make the tile size 1.5 instead of 3. That'll give us a better a better effect. It depends what size footage you're shooting. I mean, this is a 1080p file. If you're shooting in 4K or if you're using a 720p file or even lower, the tile size is going to have to change because that's that's respective of pixels. So anyway, now we have that effect. Now like the other ones, we want it to turn on and off. And because there's no uh, amount on this one, we're going to have to do the same thing we did with Smear, where we're going to have to keyframe the horizontal and vertical scale to essentially turn on and off by making them go to and from 100. So it goes from 100 to 375, respectively. And then back here on this end keyframe, you see, we don't want it to look like this afterwards. That looks terrible. So what we're going to do is set another keyframe there on the last frame and then skip ahead one frame and bring it back to 100 on both of those. And you'll see it'll go back to normal. Now what's great about having Griddler underneath Smear is that the Smear is going to affect the Griddler effect. So here it's, it's going to make it look a little bit grittier it's going to shift things around. So let's copy and paste this again, like we did before. So on the first frame here, paste that in, and then drag this over to the last frame, or to the second last frame, so that the first frame of the end of the effect lies on the last frame of the effect on the other ones, if that makes any sense. So essentially you want the effect to end, and then the next frame you want the griddler to end. And you can see there, that really looks like, oh, that looks a bit terrible there. So what we can do, and because it's a random seed, you're going to have to go through and check your footage and make sure it looks good. Here it doesn't, so what I'm going to do is add in some keyframes and make it back to normal here. So 100, 100. And then actually just delete these first ones here, because there's no RGB shift up until this point. And the Griddler only really works when there's an RGB shift. So you can have this smear happening, that's all right. It happens very quickly, so you don't notice it uh, looking bad. 
and actually if we head over to Premiere you'll see at the rate that it plays it it looks fine it doesn't look bad at all it looks great so then yep Griddler comes up effects there and then fades out and then we drag along back to here and then here we're gonna copy and paste those keyframes once again so that the Griddler comes back up while the effect is on there and then we're gonna drag these ending keyframes all the way to the end so that the Griddler can be on throughout this. Now again there's a bit of an RGB deficit in some places so what you might need to do is just play through it and see you know just how how it looks like here it doesn't really look good but then I don't know I mean it's a judgment call really I think definitely here it looks terrible so what I'll do is drag these ending frames here and then perhaps bring them back in in here and then I can have the RGB split and then come back out and finish there there we go. So now let's look at this in Premiere. Alright, I think that looks pretty fantastic, but that's only half the job. The other half is to use sound. Now I downloaded a little sound clip. Um, the sound clip was from a YouTube uh, video called TV Glitch Sound Effects. So if you import this and load it up, you'll see you've got all sorts of sound effects here, and you can listen to them. So you see you've got a whole variety of stuff that you can use. So let's use a little short one for here, like... Like this bit. There you go. And basically just be creative. And sound is, I mean, they say sound is 50% of the movie, and it's absolutely true. You need to have a good sound effect to make the effect work. I hope that was educational. And I hope that you have fun creating your own glitches. Thanks for watching.